Well, hello stampers, it's the Pampered Stamper and welcome to the Global Monthly Video Hop. I didn't participate last month because I was celebrating my mom's 91st birthday, but I'm back for this month Video Hop and it's on 3D card, not 3D cards, fancy fold cards. So if you're looking to do something a little extraordinary, you are in the right place. So I hope that you click on the little words that say show more under this uh, video and then you will find all the links for amazing talented demonstrators around the world who are sharing their uh, fancy fold cards with you. So my name is Jackie Vandersar Boot, otherwise known as the Pampered Stamper, and I'm a Canadian demonstrator who also happens to be living in Europe a lot because I married a Dutchman. So I'm also a demonstrator in Europe. Um, I'm loving that. I have the best of both worlds. I hope you love my video today. This um, card idea was sent to me by one of my loyal YouTube followers who saw this card from someone else. So all credit for this card goes to Beverly Morales from the USA. It's a great card and I'm going to show you what we're going to be using to make it. It's She called it a box fold card. We're going to be using a lemon lime twist and bubble bath. Two beautiful new colors. We're going to be using this die and these dies right here. And do you know where they are from? We're going to layer this and this and this. It's going to look much prettier when I'm done with it. So this die here is from Artistically Inked. And thankfully this carried over. So the Artistically Inked is the stamp set. And then the dies, oh goodness, I don't know what they're called. I should find out for you. But those are the dies. And I do, you know what, I always tuck this in the back. Here, we're going to find out if I can take this out. It is back here. There we go. They are called artistic dies. Okay, and I just tucked that inside the insert. I had just put it in upside down, and now I can see what it is. The other set that we're using is called Cheerful Daisies, and it's new, and I love it. I've already done so much with it. And the last tool that we're using, well, the second last, is this embossing folder, Countryside Blossoms. We are using the Oh, I think it's called Life's a Daisy paper and a tool I haven't used in a very long time and I'm going to show it to you right here. This is our Simply Scored tool and I'm using the insert with the metric. Okay, So the metric insert just goes right in here and then I have the measurements. So here are the measurements for the card. So it's four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at one and a half, two and three quarters, eight and a quarter, and nine and a half. But because I'm in Europe, I don't have access to this color in eight and a half by 11, so I did it in centimeters. And it's 10.5 centimeters by 29.8, scored at, oh no, and it's not scored at 14.9 because I'm not, not, no, no, don't even look at that. It is scored at um, two and, oh no, Oh goodness, extra score. You know what? This is totally wrong. I'm going to pause and get the right. I could start all over with this video, but I'm not going to. Here is the right measurements. The other one was for a Z fold card that I did the other day. You know, I should have taken time to clean my desk off completely. So it's 10.5 centimeters by 29.8. And then you score at 3.7 centimeters and 7.4 on either end. And those markings were right on my paper, which was really great. 3.7 and then and then the other one was 7.4 right here. So what I did was I scored and I scored. It comes with a scoring tool. So you just score once, score twice, and then flip it around. And that way you don't have to do another complicated measurement. And you do the same thing again on that side. Okay, super easy. And I did it to practice with a piece of pear pizzazz, which is um, discontinued. And see, so that was would have been like here. And it doesn't even work perfectly. Oh, yeah, it does. Right here. So here and here. And you could do it on both sides. And then the way it works is that it folds like this. And it makes into a box shape like so. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to move this out of the way and then we're going to move our die cuts out of the way for a minute. We're going to take this original 
piece of cardstock and bubble bath. And I'm going to fold it on my score lines like so, and like so. And then what's a good idea, you can, if you don't have a bone folder, you can use the edge of a block. So I have both, but, so if you don't have a bone folder, use your acrylic block. Make sure that your edges line up and then just give it a good, nice, crisp fold. When you make fancy fold cards, it's really important to have crisp folds. See, so that goes like that. And then we're gonna do the other side. So this isn't like, a lot of fancy folds don't have to be like super difficult. So this is not difficult. Here we have it, like so. And then it can fold flat if it needs to. And see, I didn't do this perfectly. So I'm going to push that in a little bit. And I'm going to re fold that. See, and now it lays flat. Okay. Then we're going to take our pattern paper and we need four pieces. In Beverly's video, it said two. But then I saw later on that she had four. So we're going to, this is 10 centimeters or four inches. And I want to cut them at 3.2 centimeters. If you're using um, inches, you're going to just cut one inch strips. So let's do that. And I also like the idea that they are going to be beside each other. And I'll tell you what I mean with that. So it was 3.2 centimeters. There. And cardstock in Europe is a little longer. So that's why these measurements, 3.2 centimeters, you'll think that is not an inch. And you are correct. So I've got two now. And see how they form one pitcher. So I want to do that on this side like that. So that's going to go here and this is going to go here and that way when it's laying flat, I don't know if anybody would notice, but you see how it's one complete hole, how nice that looks. It's not random. And then the next two are going to go on this side, but before I get mixed up, I'm just going to put this on right away before I get them in the wrong order. So it's beautiful paper. You can see that bubble bubble bath in there so it picks up that beautiful light color. I'm excited to use the new colors. The new colors, the new core colors go very well. Now let me just make sure I have this correct. See, I almost did it wrong. Lay it on here, make sure I have even borders. Like so. And then I'll put the next one on. And uh, they go very well with the colors that we already have. So over the next few weeks, I'll be introducing you to all the new core colors. If you want to, you can join my In Color Club. It's on my blog. I'm hoping that we get lots of people to have fun. It's a good way to save money, and it's a great way to slowly get everything that you need. So here we have those two. Now we're going to cut the next two. So we need it at 3.2 centimeters, or one inch if you're doing it in inches. 3.12 Make sure your paper is right up against the edge there. One and 3.2, there we go. Because if it's not tied up against the edge, you're going to get a crooked cut. So let's move those here. And then we're going to lay it so that they are perfectly aligned. Here and here, and look at that, it even matches, look. It even goes, I did it perfectly. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, let's flip it, put on our adhesive. So sometimes with just a little bit of forethought, you can take your card up a notch to, from nice to stunning. And just thinking about those things, because sometimes we just don't think about that. We're in a hurry, we cut our strips, we lay them down, we put them on. And then we realize later, it's just like sewing. When you're sewing, you know, you need to match up your stripes or your flowers sometimes. And sometimes that means when you're sewing and you're dealing with um, pattern, you gotta pay attention. So mind you, if you didn't, it wouldn't be the end of the world. You know, people are just really happy to get a handmade card and maybe they're not even gonna notice that extra effort you made. Okay, so we have this. And we're actually going about this, um, I'm going about it in a bit of a different order than, than Beverly did because I'm 
jumping off her idea. So the flower is going to go here like so, and it's going to be sitting like this. And then we want something white in the inside for people to write on. So for the inside, let me find out where my little piece of paper is. It is here. So the white piece is going to be five and a quarter by eight scored at four inches or 14.3 centimeters by 20 centimeters scored at 10. So basically, here it is. And then I took half of it and put it in the embossing folder. So let's have a look. And that is so that, oh, here's my embossing folder. So basically what you're doing is putting this in like this. And then you're running it through like this, through your machine. It's just wide enough and you only want it to go to the fold line. Okay. And then it's going to go inside your card like this. And then you're going to write in the inside. Because when you have a card that opens up, you don't want people to be able to see your writing in behind the flower. See, so the flower is going to be oops, here. You don't want to see writing through that. So now we have this beautiful white panel that's going to open up like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is give it a firm fold with our block. And remember, you do have a bone folder if you like, but you can use a block. It's my way of saving you money. You know, times are hard. We need to save as much as we can. So use your block. All right, so now we're going to put a little adhesive on the back of this. And if you love this video, please share it with your friends because that's word of mouth advertising and that is the best. And as you go through the blog hop or the video hop for all the global demonstrators, um, we love it when you leave comments. It's so nice to hear from you because working in cyberspace can be lonely. Okay, so there we have it. And I could stamp in there later, but I'm not going to do that yet. So here we go. Now we're going to start assembling our flower. And to do that, I want to use a silicone mat. Okay, so I have two of these cut out from the artistic, um, or what was it called? Artistic blooms? Artistically inked. And I want to put the, the, bubble, the bubble bath on top of the white, like so. But I only want to adhere it in a few places. So I'm going to put a little bit of liquid adhesive there. I keep my sponges, my glue sponges, in a little bag and take one out. And then what we're going to do, oops, just cleaning this off a little bit, flatten that. I want to put a little bit in the middle here, a little bit on the leaf, a little bit here. And then I'm going to line it up but it's not going to be stuck together the whole way. So you kind of peek the white through and that looks really nice. So here we go. You can see that you can see a little bit of both colors, which is really nice. It's very soft. Now we're going to take this and yeah, we might as well do this first. I don't want my glue to dry. So I'm going to add a little bit more glue to my puddle. There. and then take my sponge flatten it out and add it to the pink the bubble bath here I do love myself a bubble bath there and then to line them up there's three little little petals you just want to line those up it's easy that you don't have to go all the way around and you just it's well I thought it was easy thought it was easy and now it's not easy ah that's what I get for thinking things are easy there we go and now we give it a little press there I have the other one stuck to my finger it's going to go under here yeah. and then the last one is going to go on the big flower Okay, I'm not gonna, I shouldn't be doing this upside down. This was upside down to me. I'm looking at, this looks like it's the top. 
You know what? It's one of those days. There we go. Sometimes it just locks into place and it makes sense, and sometimes it doesn't. So do what works to, for you. There we go. And now we want to turn this leaf into a gorgeous lemon lime twist. So what I'm going to do is take a sticky note and I'm going to cut it, tear it into two. And I'm going to just lay it like so under here like that. And then like this. There. And then I'm going to get my little baby blending brush. You know what? I'm just going to pause that for a minute. Okay, so we've got lemon lime twist. And I'm just going to make this serve a purpose. I'm going to put it right there. My little bitty mini blending brush. And look. So now I'm getting green leaves without getting any green on my flower. There. That was simple. No fussy cutting, just tearing a, a little um, here. How nice is that? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put this like so. Look how nice that looks. Isn't that gorgeous? Now we need to put some adhesive again on the bottom of this. Okay. And I still have my little puddle there. So, add a little bit more. And the reason I'm using a sponge with the glue is so that things don't ooze through and make a big mess. There, oops. And now we can layer the two. And I have to say, kudos to Beverly. I would not have thought of combining these two and it's just truly gorgeous. Um, I have to decide how I'm going to do this. I haven't decided yet. I think it's like this. Yeah, there. There. How pretty is that? So now that piece is going to go on the fold of this card, like so. And then when it closes, I want to do it like this, then it goes in between like that. Okay, so that means I only want adhesive on that one little piece, just along this edge. So back to my glue sponge, back to here, because I can't get mixed up now. And I'm just hoping that my card turns out as well as Beverly's did. Um, Raylene, thank you for sending this to me. She said, I'm curious what your take is going to be on it. And I looked at the card and I just thought, this is so beautiful. I wouldn't change a thing. So the only thing I did end up changing, of course, is the fact that um, it had to be done. It had to be converted to, I'm going to move it over a little bit. It had to be converted to metric because I didn't have the metric. There. And then she, okay, we're not quite done. We need one more thing. Well, how interesting is this? Here is the terrific tool section and it shows you the simply scored tool and the metric plate that goes in it. And then I, this is the lemon, the ribbon duo combo pack. See, I had taken it out of its package and it's two things of ribbon. So I didn't know what it was called. It uh, coordinates with the Zoo Crew Suite and it's Lemon Line Twist and Petal Pink. So here we have it. There's the pink. And then here's the Lemon Line Twist. So what we're going to do is tie the Lemon Line Twist around here and we're going to tie it into a bow. And I was debating whether or not to add the, the pink as well but I don't think so. I didn't want to make it too heavy. So I'm tying that in a bow, holding it as tightly as I can. I think I did a good job. Yeah, it's nice and tight. I'm just gonna make that a bit smaller. It, this is really nice because it's a very, um, 
Yeah, it's a soft, skinny little bow. Well, guess what? I am going to have to tweak this card because this card in metric is wider. Um, Beverly's trick isn't going to work for me. So what she did is she opened this up because it's two layers and she had it sealed in here. But do you see how it just doesn't reach this side to keep it locked? So here it sits and it just doesn't quite reach. So I need to adjust it. Oopsie. So I'm using this die and I also have it cut out in bubble bath and I need to get the little bits out. So you just use this, this brush, see? And it's just great for getting out all the little bits. That means you don't have to poke them all out. You might have to poke a few. See, I have a few left. But this is your take your pick tool and this just comes off. So I can put this on or I can put that little um, let me see where I have it. The little piece that picks up the gems, it's right here. So you can screw that on when you need it. And then this also screws off, see? And then there's a little putty piece to lift things up. So it's a great tool, love it. All right, so all my little bits are just about out. And I don't think I need the whole thing, but it's quite flimsy. So I need to put two on top of each other again. So what we're going to do is lay this like so. I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive here. There, nice little puddle. Flatten it out. And then I'm not sure which piece I'm going to use, so I'm going to put adhesive over the whole thing. There. That should do it. Okay. And now we start at the bottom. Oh, this could get, cause me some grief. The pieces are, they move around easily. So this could be tricky. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. Here. But I'm gonna do the best I can. If a little bit of white pops through, that's okay. Here. There. Not bad. Here we go. There. Mm, sorry, this is a little bit tedious, but it's nice to see me struggle a little bit so that when you're struggling at home, you can say, well, Jackie also struggled. And now, oopsie, I'm going to use my paper snips and cut this into two here. And then because I want it to be stronger, I'm going to put one on top of the other. So I'm going to use some more adhesive and it will give me a little more thickness. There. Here. So now I have this. I don't need this stem here, so I'm going to cut it out. There. And then we're going to put this on the back of here and then it will tuck in. So I'm pretty happy about that. And yeah, I'm gonna use the sponge again. You notice how I'm avoiding my little piece of ink here. There's some lemon lime twist there. I don't want that color. Oh, look at the mess I've made here. There's a mess. Now I'm getting messy fingers. You're probably thinking, what are you gonna do? Just rub them together and it comes off, okay? I'm just gonna do it off camera so that you don't get all and shake it. You know what I did? I forgot to put this thing upside down. I paused the camera for a minute while I struggled to get out the glue. So I'm going to flatten that out again and I'm going to put it on this part. I'm gonna make sure I've got lots. And then I'm going to put my card like so. And I want to make sure it doesn't extend too far. Here we have it. And that way I can just tuck this leaf in underneath like so, and then it stays closed. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, 
Now we're just going to finish it off and I'm going to do the exact same thing that Beverly did with these beautiful um, brushed brass butterflies because it picks up the color of the wild wheat in there. And don't we just love to see butterflies in the garden? You know, I like this little guy. And then at the bottom, I'm going to put a bigger one because heavier things go at the bottom visually. And then we're going to do another little one on the other side. Oops. Because we want an odd number. Now you could add more. I've only got three on here, but that's just lovely, I think. And now I'm just going to undo this. And then in the inside here is where you can write a note to your friend. And we're going to take the bubble bath color. And I'm just going to move this over a little bit. What I want to do is take the daisy stamp and I want to stamp it off. I want that to be a really light color. So I'm going to put this on my block. I'm going to ink it up. And then I have a piece of scrap here. And this is funny. This is from my, um, when I got my catalog mailed to me. It's my Dutch address in case anybody wants to send me happy mail. And that's my real Dutch name, Jacomina, after my Oma. So what I'm going to do, I just thought this is really nice white cardstock, so I kept it. So I'm going to stamp off. And then I'm going to stamp here in the corner. Oh, and that's super light. Okay, you know what? Maybe we won't stamp off. We'll go very light. And Oh, you know what? But do I have something under there? Oh my goodness, look. This is what happens when you don't stamp on an even surface. Okay, very, very, very bad. So you have learned from me. So I'm going to take a notebook because it's squishy and I'm gonna lay that there. And because this is a photopolymer stamp, I'm still gonna stamp off slightly. And then I'm going to stamp here. It's not perfect, but watch. I'm going to, that's good for you to know that I don't stamp perfectly either, but let's see if we can redeem this. I'm going to take the line stamp and full strength and just do that. You know what? It gives me a nice soft um, look. It's not perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to take the center and put it in there. And look at that. I think it's beautiful. It's a whimsical look. And then I just want to do, I'm not sure, wishing you the brightest birthday. And we're going to stamp that in the lemon lime twist so that we can tie our colors together for this card. Tap, tap, tap. And then because there's no more Stamparatus, one, two, three, four, five. And look how pretty that is. And we close that up. And then you know what? I'm just going to give it a little fold. And then here we go. We tuck in those leaves. And we have a nice box card. Isn't it pretty? Thank you so much to Beverly Morales for this fantastic card idea. It's a lovely fold that she called a box card. And yeah. Let's have a look and see again what those measurements were. Here. Yeah, 10.5 centimeters by 29.8, scored at 3.7 and 7.4 from each end. And here it is in inches again, four and a quarter by 11, score at one and a half, two and three quarters, eight and a quarter, and nine and a half. So I hope that you enjoyed this card. I hope that I made it doable for you. I hope that um, I showed you what to do when it doesn't quite work out the way you wanted to. Because my card was wider in the middle, longer, because of the European measurements, it didn't work to tuck the flower in, so we ended up adding in the leaves. And I think it looks beautiful, but I want to be very quick to say that I couldn't have made this beautiful card without Beverly's video in the first place. It was her idea to use the artistically inked dye, the artistic dyes in behind and it's just a good reminder for us to think outside the box and combine products that we have. Um, 
It's kind of like outfits in the closet. Sometimes I buy an outfit and I forget to mix and match. Same thing with stamp sets and dies. We can mix and match them and come up with beautiful things. So please leave me a comment. If you love the video, give me a thumbs up, share it on Pinterest and Facebook. And um, do be sure to comment and subscribe because I'd love for you to stay in this community. It's a, a fantastic thing. Enjoy the new in colors. I'd love to hear from you. Have a super day. Bye.